more selfish without even realizing it because the rest of us uglies and averages go wow so who here loves matcha make some noise <laughs> and recycle your soft plastics <laughs> at Woolworths all right I'm being cynical I'm late for the base Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 285 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. We've done the math. Uh, it turns out episode 300 falls exactly on Christmas Day. So I don't know. Have we talked about this on the show? About mm, I don't think not we on have. the show. No. Don't know what we're going to do because big milestone episode 300. But either we do it really early in November, or mm-hmm. we do it really late. In, uh, I guess, January? I don't know. Or we just, you know, I just record an episode and release it on Christmas and nobody listens to it. What, what should we do? <laughs> Let me know. Because normally in the past, every 50 episodes, we've done like a big, like, live show other than uh, episode 250, which was just a live stream. Which, yep. again, I can't do a live stream on fucking Christmas Day. That's not going to work. So. Nope. Uh, let me know your ideas because uh, we're, we're open to hearing them, whether that means... Uh, Doing episode 299 and then just going 99.1.2.3 all the way up to like what? 99.10 and then we release an episode in like February or March, episode 300. Well, I don't know. There's there's options. Let us know what you think. Uh, got a bunch of good emails as well coming up at the end of this episode. So if you want to check those out, it uh, would be greatly appreciated. And we just added a new Newcastle show. Uh, we sold out the Newcastle show so fast that uh, we've added a second one, which is amazing. We've got a late show. Uh, and, yeah, we've added extra shows to Adelaide as well. That one has, like, five tickets left. We've got two shows in Perth after that that are both almost sold out. We added uh, a fourth Melbourne show. That one is almost full. We've added a third Sydney show, and uh, both the two shows that are on sale are uh, almost full. We've added uh, another Brisbane show, a fourth Brisbane show, and uh, that one's almost sold out. And we've got Gold Coast, which is uh, all, which is like half full as well. So Gold Coast is now losing the tour, all right? Mm-hmm. There is a winner and a loser of the tour. Right now, the winner is Melbourne, but there's Brisbane's coming in close, okay? Uh, and Gold Coast, look, you guys are the loser of the tour, all right? Whoever sells the least tickets on this, on this tour, it was looking like Ballarat, but you guys came through and actually beat out Geelong, okay? And I'll be ranking every single city at the end of the tour, and you don't want your city to be a loser. So if you fucking live there... Time to get your tickets, loosebeers.com, okay? Um, now, with that out of the way, it's time for some breaking news, all right? Uh, something amazing has happened and the world's about to change, okay? Obviously, pollution, recycling, people littering, just the general destruction of the earth that we live on is a huge problem, okay? And Rose is a big contributor to that. But that's not what we're here to talk about, okay? Um, obviously... The planet's being destroyed. You're just going to take that? You're not going to defend yourself? Nope. Or are you under the bus and you're like, yeah, I hate the environment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm a real greenie. You I'm are. A, you are yes. the most environmentally conscious person I've ever met. <laughs> Which is strange for someone who takes so many fucking private jet trips just to go and do the do the shopping. Mm-hmm. Um But that's all about to that's all about to change. You can relax, you know. When we lived in Tassie. Rosie was like, guys, the first thing we did, all right, this is before we even started training Rosie to do her job. She was like, guys, I understand that I'm the new girl here and, uh, you know, I might not even be a good employee, all right, and you guys are very on the fence about me for obvious reasons, okay? She said that to us. But she said, if there's one thing that I want to get right, it's our fucking recycling routine and what bin we use. Oh, my gosh, She set up 16 bins in the house. That was my first ever, like, semi-viral TikTok. For someone that had, like, 10 followers, I gained, like, 150 because I put out this TikTok out in Keelan for not recycling properly. Well, it probably wasn't just Keelan. It was probably you as well. I I fucking (laughs) listened to the rules because I woke up one night and she had a a fork, a recyclable wooden fork to my neck. And uh, she said, if you don't use the right bin, I'll fucking kill you. And I said, I don't think... Those recyclable forks are capable of killing me. And she says, I've got a backup wooden knife. And I was like, all right. Yeah. So I took it very seriously. Rosie didn't do the two bin thing. She was like, all right, we've got our recycling bin and we've got our regular bin, but we also have a compost bin and also we have a soft plastics bin, which I didn't even know was a thing. 
Yeah. I had no idea. She goes, the soft plastics, they need to get recycled in a different way. And I said, how do you do that? And she said, well, you have to take them down to the... And as soon as she started that sentence, I stopped listening. <laughs> if I have to take it out of my house, it's like, all right, well, sorry, turtles, you're going to be choking on something today. All right? I hope you guys like your new plastic bag residence, hermit crabs, because that's where you're living. If i got to leave my house to recycle, it's not happening. All right? Apparently, you can take the soft plastics down to Woolworths. Yeah, yeah. To all the listeners out there, recycle your soft plastics. <laughs> next next time you go into Woolies to do your shopping, just dump them in the bin there. Better person than I am, all right? What if you mm -hmm. do online delivery like me? I don't go to the supermarket. Where, what do I do with my soft plastics then? Just put make, them in Kylie make... Jenner's lips. <laughs> That's where they go. So, but look, you know, I know you would like people to go and recycle their soft plastics, but I'm here to say, all right, you don't have to do that anymore and you can honestly just stop recycling. I've started just throwing my rubbish out the window of my own home, right? I, uh, you know, I'll obviously everything I eat, I make sure that it comes in a single-use plastic, okay? Um, you know, I'll, I'll even sometimes when I get the shopping, uh, I make sure it gets delivered and it all comes in big plastic bags and I, I make sure to check non-recyclable bags, please, okay? I request that specifically. Uh, and then when it comes, like, I'll get fruit, right? I'll get an apple. And every time I get an apple, maybe I'll get, like, six apples and I'll take them out of the plastic bag they come in and then I'll individually wrap them in Glad Wrap um, just, to, <laughs> just to create more waste because the reason I'm doing this is to counterbalance... Uh, what's actually happening here, and that is the complete reversal of the destruction of our planet because Jason Momoa shaved his head. <laughs> if you didn't know that, Jason Momoa has shaved his head to raise awareness about single-use plastics. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's done, guys. The environment has been saved, uh, and, it, and it's doing so well. In fact, it's, ever since he shaved his head, it's doing a little bit too well, which is why I have decided to reverse recycle. What I do is uh, I've actually seen Rosie a couple of times at her local shops. I wait for her to drop off her soft plastics and then I go and pick them up and I strew them around the car park. Um, and uh, because Jason Momoa shaved his head and I'm seeing a few too many bees, you know? I'm seeing a few too many bees for my liking, so I'm, I'm starting to just really rev up my anti-recycling movement. I want to be the reverse Mr. Beast. You know, he's pulling, he's pulling trash out of the ocean. I'm putting it back in because Jason Momoa has completely saved the planet. What's he done? He shaved his head to raise awareness about single-use plastics. Okay, yeah. bro. How many private jets has Jason Momoa taken this year? I can check. I don't think that he's look. How about he this? doesn't look like that type of guy? If he's going to shave off his braids, yeah. to save the ocean, I don't think he's going to. Is take he it shaving off his, his braids to save the to save the ocean, or is he shaving his head so he stops getting typecast as a tribal rapist? You know, <laughs> I feel like he's just sick of playing like the barbarian role. All right, because that's, let's be honest, that's how we all came to know him was Ivan Drago, like, kind of raping someone, but it was okay because he was hot. All right, he's, all of a sudden he shaves the head and, and he's, he's going to stop receiving scripts that have the words violent sex in them. And he's going to go, oh, finally, I can fucking relax. Do you need a reason to shave your head? Why can't we just go back to the, to the real reason people shave their heads and that's mental illness? I miss those days. So what's the he's, – he shaved his head to raise awareness about single-use plastics. Yeah, and he captioned the clip, here's to new beginnings. Let's spread the aloha. Be better at protecting our land and oceans. We need to uh, cut single-use plastics out of our lives yeah. and out of our seas. So no plastic bottles, no plastic bags, mm -hmm. no package utensils. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm convinced. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's, I was a little bit on the fence about recycling, but as soon as Jason Momoa got a haircut, I went, you know what? No more. No more cheese in plastic. Absolutely no more craft singles, all right? I'm done. Jason Momoa shaved his head. I'll never use a spork again. Uh, surely there's a better way to, to promote... That's a pretty serious thing to do. 
That is a very serious thing. Is it? He shaved his head. This should be serious. Look, if if fucking... um, That's what he's known for, though. Aquaman with long mm -hmm. locks, everything. Yeah. Ivan Drago, barbarian rapist. And then he's in another another, uh, show on Apple TV Plus where he seems to just be playing a barbarian rapist who's also blind. I haven't watched the show. I've just seen the promo images and it looks like they took Ivan Drago out of the film, you know, put some sticks in his eyes and was like, all right, welcome to another universe where consent hasn't been invented yet. Act. And he and he's like, you know what? I'm shaving my fucking head. This is I've had enough of this. Because he seems like a genuinely mm. nice person. So he's like, you know what? You guys need to stop making me some fucking barbarian rapist who doesn't know how to read. Because he's blind and and a barbarian who's never read a book. All right, I'm shaving my head. I want to play an office worker who who's who's good at who plays like amateur sport on the weekend. Mm-hmm. He's look. How about this? Best faith interpretation of that is he had to shave his head for a different reason, and he was like, "Well, if it's going to get press, I might as well promote a good cause." Potentially. No, I just, okay, don't be fucking fooled by him and his amazing good gesture. Let's okay. You, you care about not using single use plastics, okay? Mm-hmm. So the way I've seen you uh do that and promote that idea is by recycling and encouraging other people to recycling. Never seen you shave your head. <laughs> I've never mm-hmm. seen you go, you know what? It's hard, but it has to be done because it genuinely helps. I'm shaving my head. That's going to fix everything. Mm. I feel like if you had to shave your head for a movie role or a diagnosis, you oh, might go. <laughs> yeah, and donate it and say I'm doing it for a good cause instead. Yeah. That is an idea. I'm sure there's people out there that do that. There are absolutely. But, his, but the thing is, if you are shaving your head, for a cause, it's always cancer. You yeah. know, I feel like, hey, Jason, what about all those bald kids in the ward, okay? Surely you can shave your head for cancer mm. and then maybe, I don't know, recycle for the info. <laughs> also, also, he's an actor, so he probably shouldn't be shaving his head. Like, I you actually have to ask permission. I guarantee you, you're going to see him in a fucking film that requires a shaved head very soon. Yeah. If this cunt rocks up on a set and they put a wig on him, I'll, I'll end the show. I guarantee you he's got something coming up that requires him, whether it's a photo shoot or an ad or a TV series or mm-hmm. a new role, I guarantee you he's, pl- he's going to play a character and it wouldn't make sense for him to have long hair. That's true. But that also true. recycle, okay? I'm not saying that you. I disagree with the guy. I'm saying that I don't think he shaved his head for the environment. I think he shaved his head and then he was like, while well, I'm here... Which is also good. That's Mm -hmm. still good, you know. That's like uh, that's like me. um, You know, that's like comedians that perform on the gala for free. We're supporting charity. Oh, they don't get paid for that. They don't. They don't get paid for that. No, that's all free. Comedy festival gets paid. Mm. Comedy festival gets paid. Gets a lot of money for that. Makes a lot of money out of it. Comedians. Donate their time and their expertise and be the only reason why anyone gives a fuck about the comedy festival. They don't get paid for that. But that's all good. Get paid in exposure. And, uh, you know, we pretend that it's for the kids in in Africa instead of to sell tickets. You know? Gosh. All right. Well, the main message to get out off this is recycle your Don't trust Jason Momoa. And recycle your (laughs) soft plastics at Woolworths. All right. I'm being cynical. I'm being comedically cynical. Good on him. He's done it for a great cause. And, uh, yeah, look, if you get stung by a bee, just go, thanks, Jason, because he saved him. Now, speaking of heroes, okay, heroes of the show, uh, we've been covering the, the Addison Ray's parents' divorce drama for a while now on the show, and mm-hmm. it just keeps uh, – it just it's the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? All right? I feel like uh, it's incredible. Addison Ray, big TikToker, all right? Uh, she hasn't – you know, she hasn't done anything special. She was just one of the first, you know. She's a beautiful girl who can dance without moving her legs and she has a nice rig and a pretty face. That's, you know, that's something. I'm sure she goes to the gym and I'm sure she's a great businesswoman. But at the end of the day, 
she started posting dancing videos on an app that was smaller. Now it's bigger. She was first in the door. That's why she's a multimillionaire, okay? If I was the first cunt to start posting jokes on YouTube, I would have been huge. I mean, that's a big reason why I'm here. I was one of the first people in Australia to start posting comedy on Facebook, okay? But comedy is maybe a little bit more of a skill than smiling and moving your arms, but, uh, but not your hips or your feet. But anyway, I digress. Imagine, okay, because everyone listening to this show could, could probably have done what she's done. Not everyone listening to this show is as attractive as her, so you wouldn't reach the heights that she does. But let's, how about this? To all of my 8 out of 10 and listeners above, all right, all three of you, okay? <laughs> and I'm one of them. After my surgery, all right? After my surgery, there'll be four. Actually, I won't be an eight. I'll be an 11. You'll be too ugly for me. You'll be you'll be too ugly to listen to the show, all right? Once I get my new fucking chin, it's over for you. The audio listens are going to dump, but the, the video listens are going to fucking spike, all right? Because people are going to be like, this podcast fucking sucks, but man, he's attractive. You know what's going to be going to be weird? I had this thought the other day, right? I'm going to be one of those hot people that have a personality because I wasn't always hot. You ever meet those people? You know, the chick who used to be fat? Oh, I and do. I the, do the, know one of those. But that's they what are I mean. a total, like, cow now. They put the weight back on. Uh, no, <laughs> they're just a terrible person. No, but here's what I'm saying, Okay. This is a Rosie bringing her personal grievances on the show. <laughs> I know a real bitch. Would you like to know her name and address? That's for Patreon. <laughs> you know when you meet like a guy or a girl that's like really attractive, but they're also like a great person and you're like, what the fuck's going on here? Oh, and yeah, then what's the you catch? find a photo of them from five years ago and they were obese and you're like, there it is. Because mm. ugly people or even not ugly, even just people who aren't incredibly attractive need a personality. All right. I wouldn't say that um, only ugly people. Need, how about this? I'll say incredibly hot people don't need a personality. And it's not even their fault. You ever meet someone who's like blindingly hot and they have been like their whole life and they just expect a lot more from people around them and they don't even realize that that's not normal? You know, one time um, I was with a girl and uh, this restaurant was like closed uh they were closing and uh we went there we're excited to go there and uh they were closing they, i saw them flip the sign too closed and i was like ah just missed it and she goes oh nah why don't we just why don't we just see why don't we just see if they'll stay open for us and i, I, I looked at her and i was like what fucking what fucking planet do you live? That's never happened to me in my life. Like where you can walk into a, a place that's... And it wasn't like a f little family-owned like thing that would need the money. It was like a good place. Just missed it, right? And she goes, oh. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, no, I reckon they'll let us in. I'm like, how? She goes, oh, I'll just like give them a good smile. Literally what she said. I'll just give them a nice smile. And I said, what? Whatever fucking reality you're living in, I have never experienced if I gave someone a good smile at night, they'd call the police with the state of my fucking head right now. If I walked up to someone who was like closing, I opened their door when they're about to lock it and was like, hey, can I come in and smile? They would, they would pull out the bat. But, you know, that's pretty privilege. And you so know what? It worked. It did work. Wow. It worked. And that's, that's a hot person's universe. And hot people, they just get to be guys and girls. They get to be more selfish without even realising it because the rest of us, uglies and averages, go, wow, can't believe you're gracing me with your presence. Amazing. Some people just don't hear no a lot, all right? And that is why hot people can sometimes be a little bit cunty. But people that became hot later in life are some of the best people on the planet because they had to develop a personality when no one just wanted to something to do with them just because of how they looked. So they had to convince people that they were cool and likable and good to hang out with. Two, they went through the hardship of, you know, 
losing the weight, putting on the muscle, whatever they had to do, right? Chopping their skull in half and reforming their entire head. And then they also have the perspective, all right? I know what it was like to be an uggo. Or they can just be cunty as well. <laughs> that's <laughs> because true. Because they have all this confidence now. That's true. Because they're like, because, yeah, that, that's the other way. They go, man, the world fucked me over when I was ugly or when I was, this happens to everything, when I was ugly, when I was broke, when I was less successful. So now that I'm here and people are treating me different, fuck them all. Yeah, they're just like, I'm too good for you now. I'm more attractive. I think that's more rare. I think that like people who are hot their entire life, right, especially when they were like eight or nine, um, you know what I mean, people that are like just attractive for their age group their entire time growing up, right? There's always that like one girl that even when even when you were eight, you were like, man, she's amazing. And then you hit 20 and she's still beautiful, but you're not. And you're like, fuck, she's still got it. And then she'll be like that for the rest of her life and she won't even know that her experience is different to everyone else's, right? But I feel like those people that are just beautiful their whole life, guys and girls, you know what they are? They're like rich kids. They're like kids who were born into wealth. And it doesn't matter how much their dad tells them, oh, you know, you had to work for this and it's not free and blah, blah, blah. They don't know because they were born with it. As opposed to a person who was broke and then became rich and still knows what it's like to be poor and can have empathy, right? That's what a hot person who used to be ugly is like. I knew what it was like when I was down there with, with you fucking dregs when no one was buying me a drink. Now, how did I get onto this? Guys, I have no idea. Can't remember. <laughs> Welcome to Spearhead Sundays, home of the tangents. Um, th- what I'm saying is that's going to be me, is not only, all right, will I be incredibly hot, sexy and attractive, I'll also be a really good person and humble. So Addison Ray's parents are having a big divorce. <laughs> 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 um, and... Uh, that's why I got talking about that for some reason, okay? I got distracted by how hot I'm going to be. Um, so they're having a big messy divorce, okay? That's right. This is how I got into this. Picture this, okay? Picture you're like, I don't know how old she was when she started. Let's say like 17, 18. She starts posting on TikTok, right? So like you're like a fucking kid. You start posting on an app for fun and then because you were just the first person to kind of work out the secret sauce accidentally, because that's how it always happens with social media. People just fumble upon the method to blowing up and then everyone copies you, but you're always the first if you can maintain it, so you're always on top, right? PewDiePie, great example, all right? She just stumbled across across this doing it for fun, right? Becomes an incredibly famous celebrity for kind of not really much of a reason other than being lucky and first, And then she has to watch her parents become famous also because they got looped into it because the internet can't be obsessed with just just one person. They also have to go for the entire fucking family. And then they watch, you know, your mum and dad who have had their entire life before you of just being regular private citizens, maybe with a bit of money, just be gifted this insane amount of fame from you. Imagine struggling with fame that you didn't really earn because what you do isn't, like, particularly amazing. Like, you just do TikTok dances like every other teenager. Imagine struggling with that, right? But imagine the struggle of being gifted fame by your fucking child. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. it's like the reverse of Will Smith's kids. That's fucking weird, right? So you're just some, like, banker or stay-at-home mum and all of a sudden you've got, like tens of millions of followers, everyone gives a fuck about your personal life and then you go through a fucking messy divorce that's incredibly public. You go insane, right? So they've split up, mum and dad have split up and uh, the father has started talking shit about the mum, posting like shirtless videos of him flexing his 46-year-old rig and his strangely white American whiteboard teeth which will be me soon. And then the mother, right, responds by fucking a 26-year-old rapper called Young Gravy who's basically wearing Little Dickie's clothes while Little Dickie's out of the house. Queen. <laughs> Is she a queen? 
Yes. Okay. And if his husband looks like an asshole. Yeah, he's obviously an asshole. But also, you just showed me a fucking photo the other day or before of the the dude fucking a young girl. And you're like, isn't that gross? Oh, it is. (laughs) But, but. It's the same. They're both gross. (laughs) I think Sherry's cool. I feel sorry for Sherry that her husband is embarrassing her all over social media. He's a media. fucking loser, hundred percent. She is yeah. at least not doing that. She's not engaging with the beef or yeah. But she also, hasn't she commented. is. If she's going out and like to to the VMA award show with a twenty six year old and and deliberately kissing him on camera, like she's not making TikTok, <laughs> but she's like she's going. Oh, he's gonna hate this. Yeah, probably. They're in the back of the Nicki Minaj speaking, like, her speech, yeah. and then Young Gravy and Sherry just, like, making out in the background was so yeah. funny. Yeah, this this is what I mean. Like, it's all girl power when, when an older woman fucks a 26-year-old guy, but when an old dude fucks a 26-year-old adult woman, it's gross. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why? What's the difference? Um... Okay, maybe maybe Why, this. Why? Because girls are stupid. Is that what you're saying? Because a 26 year old adult female is, is is less intelligent than a male. I agree. I think the situ. I think the situation is different. Like she wasn't doing anything yeah. until her husband w- started embarrassing her. Mm. Oh, actually, no, she did stitch Young Gravy's arm. She was. <laughs> she did stitch. Yeah, she it. was public. Okay, they're both fucking weird. <laughs> they're I both. Think... They're both pretty bad. But he's definitely. He's worse. He's definitely worse. He's on like the. Border, borderline, actually almost definitely like abusive now of like post tagging her and everything and posting about her and her new relationship or whatever. Yeah, that's probably, like, why, that's probably why she went to the VMA Awards. She's like, yeah. okay, he keeps having a go at me. I'm just going to get back at him in the yeah. easiest way I can. That's what I mean. I feel like she's like playing into it as well. He's definitely worse, but she's definitely playing into it. And I think that both of them are doing this at the expense of their entire family as well. Which is why I think that he's worse, but they're both fucking gross because they they got kids younger than Addison Ray who are, I guess, not famous, mm, right? And they have to true. watch, you know, imagine going to school and being like, oh, your mum's fucking the the rapper guy. Mm, yeah, that would be Who's your daughter's, your sister's age. <laughs> that would be really bad. <laughs> That's fucking strange. But um, there is a silver lining to all of this, Okay. There is a silver lining, and that is at least, you know, with all of this, at least Addison Ray's father has started an OnlyFans account. <laughs> so he started <laughs> he started an OnlyFans. And I have the article here, because you've got to read it, right? So after they go to after Sherry goes to the VMA Awards uh, and starts hooking up with like some 26-year-old rapper wearing Lil Dickie's career, um, she then uh, he then posts that he's joined an OnlyFans. He's made his own OnlyFans. Monty Lopez OnlyFans, and his bio's awesome, right? His bio's the most midlife midlife crisis shit I've ever seen, okay? Monty Lopez, and uh, his display picture is him shirtless, uh, wearing, like, what are they? They're, like, really either they're, like, dad underwear or really long shorts, both embarrassing, One's more embarrassing than the other because if, if you can mis- if I can mistake your underwear for your shorts, you're wearing the wrong underwear, okay? The other photo, his cover photo, is him pulling down his pants. Have a look at that. How hot's that? <laughs> this one. It's sideways. Look at that. Look at it like that. Oh, <laughs> gross. Yeah. So that's... <laughs> He That's- has kids that could literally look him up. <laughs> yeah, well, look. Not that you'd want wow, to do that. So you don't, you don't respect sex workers now, Rosie? I just, in the public eye, when you have, like, children that it's can weird. easily just, like, click on your link in your bio. I know. It's so fucked. Um, how about this? This is his, bio, his OnlyFans bio. Unleash the beast, all caps. Unleash the beast! <laughs> Women love me and men want to be me. True. <laughs> all, the, all that Rosie and I talk about is how much she loves her and how much I wish I was him. That's all we talk about. I wish I was Monty Lopez. Social media can't handle me being raw. Sounds like me promoting a stand-up comedy clip. Subscribe for the most explicit version of me. Let's fucking go. Fire emoji, demon emoji. 
Nice. And then, uh, yeah, he was just posted like a bunch of shirtless photos. But my favorite thing about this, right, my absolute favorite thing, even funnier than, than this dude creating an OnlyFans account, even funnier than this is the fact that about 10 minutes after he posted it, he deleted it. <laughs> so which means he got a call. Dad, take that shit down or I'm cutting you out of the fucking will. That's Addison Ray going, don't forget who pays your bills, cunt. That's what she needs to do. She needs to fucking step up and give these two a call and say, Mom, get rid of that fucking rapper or I'm going to stop paying your mortgage. Dad, delete the OnlyFans or you're taken out of the will. That's what she needs. She's, she needs to start fucking parenting these children. I reckon Addison Ray needs to step up and really act like the person she is and that's the bitch who pays the fucking bills. That's so funny. But how's this, all right? This is the shit where it's like, you know, where I'm like, okay, now we're entering into potentially like abusive relationship territory. So he created the OnlyFans account mm-hmm. and he, he goes, I'm launching it on September 4, which is his ex-wife's birthday. September 4, my gift to Sherry. <gasps> oh. That's his post. <laughs> oh, God. That's fucking crazy. Um, yeah. So that's good on him, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I say keep it going. I would love to see more. It's exciting. It's entertaining. It's making for good podcast material. I think that's what these people don't really understand is is all they're really doing is like helping people that just report on this garbage pay their bills and then just traumatizing their children. <laughs> you know, that's so uh, funny. So good on him. And I hope, uh, you know what? I would like to see Monty Lopez with uh, with his own rapper. You know, let's let's see Monty Lopez with Coy Ray or something. I reckon that would be kind of exciting. Who's the female equivalent of Young Gravy? Who's like a comedic joke rapper that's blown up on TikTok? Doja Cat? Oh yeah, my God. I was going to say. Just got cancelled. I was going to say Doja Cat. Uh, She's too famous. Can't really think of anyone. Mm. Who's that, uh, that, uh, that bubble chick that raps about her pussy in the cartoon character voice? I would like to see her and him in a film clip or maybe on OnlyFans. Does he take requests? I don't know. Yeah, dude. He's got like, uh, they have two sons that are younger than Addison Ray. Mm, it's like a really, really young one. Looks like could be in primary school. Yeah, he has to go to school and like, all, you know, all the kids are like playing those TikToks on repeat. You know, one of the seniors has got access to Monty's OnlyFans. Is this your dad's cock? Mm. Is he wearing shorts or underwear? <laughs> Which is yeah, more embarrassing. You'd have you'd have kids like that, but I feel like, you know, their sister is Addison Ray, so why try to fuck with them? Also. What's she gonna do? Do a dance with a meme caption? You know? Mm. What's gonna what's gonna happen if I if I bully your younger brother at school? What are you gonna you're gonna dance me into submission? I don't know. Would you bully would you bully someone when their like s- sister was that famous and that rich? Yeah, I'm actually. I've actually booked flights to LA. I'm going to find these kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course, kids would. Kids are fucking horrible. Absolutely, they're going to do that shit. If it's like it's funny if you're a horrible little like teenager and you're watching like this the sibling of one of the most famous chicks in the world right now go through this crazy fucking drama. At the very least, someone's going to ask you about it because it's not going to come from his friends or people in his year level. It's going to come from, like, if he's in year seven, it'll come from the fucking year nine boys going, Oi, how's your dad? Oh, you yeah. know, when he walks past. That's what it's going to be. He's not going to get, like, bullied by people in his year level. It'll be like the fucking dropkick seniors who are about to, like, fail high school going, Oi, tell, tell Sherry I love young gravy, you know? It's going to be that at lunchtime when he walks past. Yeah. It's going to be like no one kid relentlessly bullying him. It'll be the entire school going, oh, young gravy, fuck your mum. Your dad's got only fans. That's what it's going to be. <clears throat> so, no, bullying is wrong, and I would never advocate bullying of children, but 
You know, that's. I feel like that's absolutely what he's going to bring on his own children mm. and her from, like, of course that's just going to happen. I don't know. I, th- I I do think that it is quite interesting watching, like, uh, everyone go, oh, when he's fucking young girls, that's creepy, but when she fucks a young dude, that's cool and female empowerment and dope and swag. Um, that's confusing to me. It's like either both of them are creepy or you're kind of saying yourself that you think women are inferior because a young man can handle an older woman but a young woman has no agency when she's with an older man that's a very feminist point here on Speedhead Sundays you're welcome um but also I don't know I think it's it, it also though it is a little bit different because young gravy himself is a famous person whereas if this dude's just like going and preying on younger chicks that might be a little bit starstruck now you're talking about power dynamics. Mm. How progressive is Spearhead Sunday's getting, guys? <laughs> I'm trying my best to counterbalance Rosie's rampant sexism on the show. <laughs> um, <clears throat> <laughs> so, yeah, guys, anyway, you know what I did notice about the Monty, the dad's OnlyFans thing? Not a pube in sight. Um, speaking of, manscaped.com. You know, if you want to get like Monty Lopez, nice and smooth, uh, use code SPEARS for 20% off. The best uh, the best personal groomer in the game, the Lawnmower 4.0, something that I use very frequently. Uh, I have two of them. I use one for one for downstairs, one for the beard. And uh, it's 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 uh, not only has it kept me nice and trimmed and groomed right downstairs, but it saved me a lot of strife at the barber because uh, I, I used to get uh, threatened with a banning if I pulled my cock out again at the barber. He said, I don't do that. <clears throat> I do beards. So now that I've just taken both of those things in my own own hands using the uh, lawnmower 4.0, it's made the barber trip a lot more, a lot less stressful, and it's made uh, you know my face and my nether regions a lot more groomed. Um, so uh, definitely check out manscaped.com and use code Spears for twenty percent off and free shipping. The best ball bag trimmer in the game. They got nose hair trimmers. They've got a uh, ball toner and ball deodorant. I'm yet to use it. I'm excited to smell. Excited to give my own myself a whiff. Uh, and uh, they have a bunch of other stuff. They've got like travel. Uh, grooming kits for like uh, trimming your nails and filing them down. I take them every time I go on tour. Really good. Um, and yeah, they're just releasing like new products. They got underwear. They got like a whole kit, uh, personal grooming kit. That's just like really good, really good value. And they they fucking work. They're better than anything you can get at those like scam shaving stores you'll see at every shopping center that charge you fucking four hundred dollars for a razor that'll cut the tip of your cock off. All right, although some of the listeners obviously need that, judging by the emails we've been getting. Um, I will, still wouldn't recommend it. I'm still bitter about that time I got fucking ripped off by the shaver store and I paid way more money than, than, than for a razor than I would have paid for at fucking Manscaped and it just cut me to ribbons and did a terrible job. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS. 20% off and free shipping. I use it all the time. I've been using it for years. They support the show. Support the, the brands that, that keep us spinning. That's how we keep everything... That's how we keep the fucking lights on. Um... Right. What else has been listening happening here? I uh, I I've been watching the new Lord of the Rings show. I watched uh, the first two episodes last night, and uh, I've been seeing everyone just shit on the show or on Twitter. Everyone's like arguing about it, really upset about it. Uh, I watched the first two episodes. I like it. I don't see any. I don't. I genuinely don't see kind of any problems with it. There was one fight scene where uh, with a troll that they they cut too much. I hate when they have fight scenes and they do like rapid cuts. Mm. And that shit always looks lame. But that was kind of it. Everything else, it looks cool. It looks like it's Lord of the Rings. It's kind of shot like it's Lord of the Rings. Uh, I think some of the elves look a little bit too human. I think that's one thing that the Lord of the Rings movies really nailed is like the elves looked weird. Like they look beautiful but strange, which is what an elf should be. Like, oh man, is that hot? I don't really know. That's what an elf is. I feel like some of the elves in the Lord of the Rings show like the... The guy they cast as Elrond just looks like they found a, a dude that has a Lego brick for a head and was like, you're an elf. And it's like, all right, you need to have more than strange cranium proportions to be an elf. I feel like he doesn't really look like Elrond, but whatever. We'll let it slide. I liked it. You've watched some of it? Uh, yes, I've watched some of it. And you love it? Some being the keyword. Uh, I liked it. I can't, I guess like the... Um Oh, no, I didn't guess, actually. I think Cam told me that, like, the boy and the girl are from, like, their previous selves. 
Yes. From like the main one. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, Elrond that I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm, <clears throat> yeah. No, I thought it was like visually like absolutely stunning. Yeah, it looks good. Um, yeah, and I liked the um, the bit where they go like went to the native people, the <laughs> – you didn't fucking watch it, did you? <laughs> no, you, I did. I yeah. did. I was just like zoning. I think it was like a bit slow for me. It is slow. Yeah. The first two episodes, kind of nothing happens. But it's a lot. It's also like a lot of world building. You know, like mm. it's a whole fucking. It's like you need to you need to have seen the movies and then you need to like understand that universe and then you need to like comprehend that it's like you know fucking hundreds or thousands of years before before that. that. Yeah. So I feel like it's it's just world building. And also a lot of the shit they're complaining about is like, oh, this female elf is a Mary Sue. She's too powerful. She's too strong. But it's like all she really did in the first two episodes was she killed a troll, you know, and that's kind of all the battle prowess she's shown. Other than that, she's just like a, a bitch with a vendetta, which is cool. Like yeah. Lord of the Rings has always had like really strong female characters in them. Which is really cool. Yeah, it's when cool. I was, I think I was trying to talk about the like the animal with like the black blood. Yeah, the cow. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I yeah, like that. That, that scene. That, that was, was probably two. So you've watched like the first two episodes, maybe. Yeah, I was kind of like zoning in and out. Yeah, I feel like you are in no <laughs> position to critique this TV series. I'm regretting asking your opinion. What did you think? Like, oh, I think I kind of watched half of it. Oh, cool. House right. of Dragon is cool though. I haven't Game watched of any Thrones. of I haven't watched any Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is not for me. I watched the my girl years ago got me to watch the first few episodes of Game of Thrones, the original. Have you seen it? No, but no. I I'm watching the prequel and I I'm able to understand it. So Yeah, okay. Maybe I should start there. Um but anyway, uh within like the first four episodes they just kill Rod Stark, who was my favorite character, and I was like, Yeah, this isn't for me. Because the series where like everyone just gets it's killed. Very, off. Yeah, it's very violent. Mm. Like I watched the first episode and there's a scene where a woman's like uh, in labor and yeah. then it also like I think it's cutting to a fight scene at the same time where some guy got his balls chopped off. I'm like, Kim, I don't know if I want to watch this. How do you know there were men and women? How do I know that? What? How do you know there were men and women? What do you mean men and women? Well, how did you know it was a woman giving birth? Because I saw her face. Wow. So you're saying <laughs> only women give birth and only men have balls. Oh, don't come for me. <laughs> don't come for me. <laughs> wow. Okay. I think I might have to take her microphone away. Um. <laughs> that was a bad joke. Oh, I'm sorry. Distasteful. I'm sorry. That's very distasteful. All right. Remember to recycle, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it, I think I, you know what? I was going to. That gave me the shits that the they killed off someone that I like straight away. And then I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those shows where you get attached to people and then they kill them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, I'm going to have another crack at Game of Thrones when I can really binge it. And then I just didn't. And then the disappointment of the finale of Game of Thrones happened. And now I'm like, I really want to watch Game of Thrones, but I feel like it's going to end up being self-harm because I know that the ending sucks. Yeah. Or, or a lot of people think the ending sucks. You know, knowing me, I'm, I'm such a fucking contrarian. Whenever anyone, whenever the, a group of people say this thing good or this thing bad, I just always hold the opposite view. So chances are I'll fucking hate Game of Thrones and love the ending. Mm. <laughs> you know, I saw everyone shitting on Lord of the Rings. And I was like, I'm going to love this. <laughs> and I did. But a lot, I feel like a lot of people are, are, are like, oh, a black elf. This isn't true to J.R. Tolkien's image. This isn't true to his vision. And to those people, I would say, correct. Raging racist, that guy, <laughs> <laughs> from what I understand. Um, but I don't know. You can, have a, you can have a black elf. I do kind of draw the line, though, with that stuff at, like, um, say they make a historical piece and they have, like, a uh, – they'll have, like – uh, a black Viking, and it's like, yeah, all right, you know, that's like that's like when they fucking cast. That's like if they made Mulan and they put a white chick as Mulan, which I, which they would do if if we let them. They've done in the past, hundred percent, many times. Oh, let's uh, let's put a white guy as Genghis Khan. Remember when they did that? 
Or that, what's that fucking Tom, is it a Tom Cruise movie where he plays a samurai? And it's like, all right, that guy can be Japanese, you know? But a black elf, if it's like a completely fictional fucking universe, why can't there be a black elf or a black dwarf, you know? Mm. Or, a, or a black hobbit. Let, yeah, let's go. Run it. If it's a whole fucking universe, we can have, elves can be like different complexions. Doesn't really make a difference. If the, as long as he has cheekbones, if they put a black guy with no cheekbones, get him out. Because I was, I was seeing a lot of elves with no high cheekbones and it was annoying me. But that's the only problem I have with Lord of the Rings is some of their elves look a little bit too human, you know? And I feel like they tried to compensate as well when they did show the humans, they made the humans look like fucking horrible. Every single human looked like a troll. And they were like, all right, that, that's not making your elves look more elvish. That's just making those guys look, look like they didn't bathe. But story's good. I'm enjoying Lord of the Rings. It might get worse. It is Amazon. But they made the boys. I like the boys. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the point is Rosie has some problematic views on gender. Um, Anna Paul did a meet and greet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. Uh, this one was crazy to me. Uh, seeing this on TikTok. So Anna Paul is like a giant. So I knew her as a TikTok influencer. That's how I found it. She does like vlogs. Mm. Uh, today uh, we spent $10,000 on breakfast and then I cried because I'm kind of mentally unstable and my life's unfulfilling. Uh, but then we got on a jet and we spent $3,000 on an outfit and then I wore it once and then I threw it into the sea and a turtle choked on it and died. Remember to recycle. I'm on a private jet. You know, those vlogs. <laughs> um, so I thought she was just a vlogger. Right. And, uh, but then I searched her on Twitter and I found out that she has some really nice tits. She is an OnlyFans creator. Uh, mm -hmm. She's like a bit of a porn star. And she's like, uh, I say she is like one of the first like hybrid influencer adult porn star creators. Cause you saw in the past like few years, once OnlyFans kind of blew up and you needed like a social media presence, it's very similar to comedy. Before, with, before social media, with comedy, you needed the comedy festival to approve you and then they would put you on TV and then you would do Raw and maybe you would win Raw and then you would go on to do like the comedy festival road show if you did well there. They might put you in a, in a small venue if you did well there. They would put you in a bigger venue if you did well there. They put you on the gala, tell everyone you're famous and all of a sudden because the TV told everyone you're famous, you're famous, right? But then social media came out, people like me and others started blowing up and it was like, oh, fuck, we can kind of build a framework and an audience outside of this thing and still sell tickets. Let's just create our own audience. Same thing happened with porn. You needed a porn network to fucking, you know, make you like Brazzers or uh, look at me pretending not to know the names of these companies. That's the only one I know, Brazzers. I don't know. All these big porn companies would choose girls, put them with big stars, literally, and then make them famous and then that would happen. Then Pornhub came along, but you still couldn't really have a social media account because it was porn, Right. So you couldn't really build an audience outside of your work. A bit like fucking um, musicians before social media. You had a song that was on the radio that you liked, but you could only see it if it was... You could only hear it if it was on the radio, right? You couldn't see them elsewhere. Then Twitter was like, fuck it. Post to your pussy. Let's go. And then all these porn stars were like, oh my God, I can create an actual audience that likes me on Twitter. And then OnlyFans happened and you needed an audience because the money was even bigger. You make more money independently of these porn companies. So all these porn stars start really, really grinding on social media. You see like big stars like Riley Reid start networking with the YouTubers and Logan Paul and he goes on, they go on podcasts and all of these like massive, massive porn stars that you previously only knew them from porn were doing podcasts and starting vlogs and featuring in content and, and building all this stuff. And they kind of went the opposite way where they started in porn and then they grew their social media following. Whereas I feel like Anna Paul and all these other creators uh, are like the reverse, which is more common now. Build online following and then because you're hot, start porn. It's like the reverse of that, which is almost more natural, I guess. Or unnatural, depending on how conservative you are. So she's like this on TikTok, this like very family friendly, almost childlike influencer. Mm. But on Twitter, she's posting tits and pussy. Yeah. And on OnlyFans, she's like, you know, 
posting like I haven't seen, I don't sign up, but like, you know, posting porn. And mm-hmm. it's this weird thing of like all these super, super young people, like kids, follow Anna Paul the vlogger, but then there's like this pipeline to hopefully when these kids are 18, but mo- you know, obviously not actually, you know, when they turn 18, buy her porn. Mm. Um, which is like fascinating. Imagine if the only fan, if, if imagine if the Wiggles were like fucking chicks on OnlyFans. Bit of an extreme example, but imagine if you could watch, you know, the Wiggles go like you've been watching the Wiggles your entire life from when you were a toddler. You know all the dances, hot potato, hot potato, <laughs> and then you hit fifteen and you start getting pubes and you're like, oh my god, five Wiggles gang bang Dorothy is one click away. On Twitter, there's a free preview. Grab mum's credit card. You can watch the full video. Wags the dog is jacking off in the corner. He's got his red lipstick out. They're singing different songs like <laughs> Rocket Ship, Rocket Ship, Go! Red Rocket, Grow! It's like that. Yeah. So, anyway, she does this meet and greet, right? Uh, what was it for? Do you know what it was for? It was like at a store Sta- or something. Yeah, for Stacks Official. She has merch that she was selling and she did like a live, uh, like you could meet her in person at the store. Man, everyone has merch, huh? You need to start a merch line, Rosie. Honestly. Just start selling like editing wear. <laughs> like these these sweatpants are perfect to edit the day away in. Mm. I can give me a discount code. Use code SPEARS for 20% off. <laughs> You know, if if the if the OnlyFans girl can have merch, why not the editor of the OnlyFans girl as well? Mm. That's what I think. Um, but yeah, so she's she's already it's fucking crazy that a clothing brand is letting like a you know a sex worker be an ambassador for their brand. That's fucking crazy how much like social media has changed. Like before, even like three years ago, she just wouldn't have an account. She would get banned off fucking everything all the time. But now it's like this weird thing where you can't promote your OnlyFans on TikTok. Well, or she Instagram. actually did. She actually did that. I follow her on really? um, TikTok. Yeah, like her vlogs are awesome. I love her content. But she did one video where she was. She's like, "This is how I set up to shoot OnlyFans," and right. was doing something like, uh, "Yeah, but content in the bath or something." She's like, "This is how I'd get ready. This is how like yeah. I would set up and stuff." That's interesting. Mm. Did she get you? Did she get me? No. No? I, I'm not, yeah, into it only fans, but I do love her vlogs. Like, I think she's pretty genuine. This is what online. I mean. Like, this is so fucking weird where yeah. you can have, like, a separation between types of content. It's like if I – imagine if I was, like, an athlete and, like, you didn't give a fuck about sport. It's like that where you love my comedy but you don't care about swimming, you know? Mm. Like – but it's porn where you can have people, and I watch them, I think they're great. You can have people that love her and who she is, but they have no interest in seeing her tits, right? But a lot of those people are children, and it's this weird thing of like, should that be allowed? Should an an adult content creator also be allowed to kind of essentially create content that whether they're aiming to or not, inevitably will attract so many underage people. Yeah, that that is a bit of a strange uh, thing because there's people that would be younger than me, like younger than like 16, that would probably watch her. It's a weird moral question. Yeah. I almost think that probably what should happen, there should kind of be tools where this should probably happen, where I feel like it should be like alcohol, where like alcohol brands – you need to be 18 to follow them. I feel like if you're creating content that is for only, like, if you're creating porn, I feel like it's probably not the best idea to let kids that are, like, 13, 14 follow these people. Even if they're not really talking about porn or promoting their porn, it's inevitable that those kids will find out about it yeah. and want to engage with it. Yeah, like, also just out of, like, the curiosity, like, on her link prop. She probably has, like, Twitter, like, 18 plus only. But 16-year-olds are going to click on that. 100%. Yeah, that's never stopped fucking anybody, right? Yeah. Uh, And it's like, how much of this is the parents' responsibility to keep their kids out of smart? It's like, once... I feel like the whole... whole, Almost the whole parents' argument is completely out the window of, like... I feel like that was possible back when I was growing up where you had a desktop computer in the family room 
Mm. And then, you know, even when it made its way to my bedroom, you know, parents could still fucking check in and monitor what kids are doing. The minute it went into your fucking pocket, it's gone. Parents have no way to kind of make sure that kids are not, you know, fucking up their brains with social media or engaging with, like, adult content when they're way too young, like 12. I think I first watched porn when I was, like, 12, I reckon. Mm. And that was, like, that was in the family room when the parents were out because my friend came over and was like, dude, I'm going to blow your mind, and we watched porn together. That was my (laughs) first experience of it, you know, sitting down next to my mate, looking at him and going, I've got a stiffy. Me too. That's my first experience with porn is oh someone God. had to fucking bring it over and go, check this out, right? <laughs> now fucking every kid, I bet at like 10, 11, maybe even younger, is, yeah, on fucking TikTok and going, 18 plus, what's this? And then, bam, they're looking at their favourite vloggers, tits and pussy. <laughs> and it's like, is that a good thing for the for the world to get these kids like, exposed to porn so fucking early before they've even hit puberty probably not you know and then there's like the p- people who are like oh we need to respect se- sex workers it's like yeah okay we can do that but like we can also question whether kids should be viewing it or it should be so easily accessible to children because i looked at the the video of the the meet and greet and she had to leave it was she's so fucking famous She'd be one of the most famous people in the country right now that they shut down the entire street and police told her and everyone else to leave. It was, like, dangerous there were that many yeah. people. And they weren't all adults. I would wager even, like, 50% to even the majority were, like, kids, teenagers yeah, and stuff. Yeah, they shut down all of Perth City. Yeah. And um, there was people that even went to hospital with, like, injuries because it was just so, like, chaotic, like everyone trying to push in front of each other. Yeah. You can't do... Meet and greets fucking suck anyway. Like, if that's the only thing you do, I hate them. I'll meet everyone after shows, but I feel like I've given them a show and then as an extra, you get to meet me. And I, it's also good for me. I like meeting, meeting people. It's, it's like a nice experience, right? Yeah. I feel like if I'm like, all right, come here and you get to meet me for 30 seconds and that's all you get, I feel like that sucks. Yeah, yeah. She did acknowledge that, though, in a TikTok, and she said the next event that she will do is a ticketed event. Right. To prevent that from happening. What's she going to do? Get on stage and, and tell everyone what she did today in 30 seconds and go, all right, thanks, guys. Here's my tits. I believe she actually did do a stage show with her, and her brother is also famous as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that was about, but. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah. Look, love her vlogs. Love her OnlyFans, right? Guarantee you that show's going to be dog water. <laughs> That's just going to be boring as fuck. Hi, guys. Hello. Hey. Thanks so much for coming out. <sighs> well, I'm nervous. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, uh, t- so today I went, I got matcha. Who here loves matcha? Make some noise. <laughs> and that'll be it for the hour. Mm, yeah, it might be like a live podcast or something. Mm. I'm not sure. From a chick who doesn't have a podcast. Yeah. Those <laughs> those fucking online influencer shows are garbage always. Like those things make people hesitant to see me. They see someone with an online audience and they go, all right, yeah, but is are they good live? Stand-up clips has kind of solved that question, but I remember for fucking years and years and years of my first few years of my career before I had any stand-up out there when I was good and I knew I was good and I could perform to people who weren't my fans and make them laugh. But a lot of people will be like, yeah, but I've seen this person who has a big online audience and their show fucking sucked. So is this that? Mm. And those online influencers, it's almost always that. <laughs> but, you know, she's hustling. Um, I reckon she should team up with the, with the Wiggles. Mm. And on... Their platform, she comes on and they do a song about her day, right? We spent three grand on some shoes today. Then we bought a $200 meal. Woo! They do it in a really deep voice and it just kind of, it's just that on a loop. And then on her platform, they all fuck her. And that way everyone gets like something out of it. Where she, where the Wiggles get like a cool kitty song and bring over a new audience. And then she gets like some great content for OnlyFans. I would, I would pay for that. Um, anyway, guys, 
Oh, it's probably time to do. I've got time to do one email. It's a long podcast today because probably because I got went on that massive tan- tangent about how handsome and 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 uh, amazing I'm going to be with a good personality as well, and <laughs> and also be really humble too. Um, we have uh, some emails here now. Now, I'm going to leave this up to you, Rosie. Right? Okay. Because and and last week when I left it up to you, even you were like, "Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I read the the subject of an email and I said, "I'm not going to read that because it's about dicks." And Rosie said, "You have to." Okay. I thought it would be like funny, not gross. I was very wrong there. How about obviously. this okay. headline? Okay. I managed to defeat phimosis. Mm. Intriguing. Okay. I'm leaning towards yes, but I'm gonna but I'm gonna leave it up to you. All right. What's another option? Okay, another option. Okay. Um uh, I have a girlfriend, but I don't know if I actually love her. Okay, I would read that one. That okay. sounds intriguing. That's juicy. All right. I, I hope to God my boyfriend never says that about me though. Um Oh my god. Hey Lewis, my name's Cam. <gasps> I'm joking. It's not. I'm joking. I'm joking. He wants to be remain anonymous. Um, we'll read the Phimosis one next week. Stay tuned. Um, I have a girlfriend, but I don't know if I actually love her. Oh. Hey, Lewis. Uh, I've been watching you on YouTube since I was 11. See, this is what I mean, right? You can't. That's that's not on. You can't be watching me since you were 11. You know. I can't keep kids away from watching myself. Imagine if I was also posting my dick on Twitter. This kid would be a fan of it since he was 11. It's not, it's something, there needs to be some kind of tool where you can go, people who are not 18 and verified on social media can't view my shit. And Mm. TikTok and Instagram needs to go, all right, they need to give up the fight against sex workers. All right, they've lost. It's part of social media now. They need Mm -hmm. to go, all right, you can be a sex worker, but you can't post nudes here and also, if you're going to have an OnlyFans account or some kind of sex work account, you can't have followers who are under 18. I think that's reasonable. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I've been watching you on YouTube since I was 11. I'm 14 now. Okay. Look what you've made us do, Rosie. Sorry. You, we're going we're gonna to look how fucking long the email is. We're going to read <laughs> something about some fucking high school romance that's probably been going for two weeks. And they go, oh, you know, I used to love her when she was she had pigtails, but now she has a ponytail. I'm not into it. <laughs> hey, here's the answer to your question. You're 14, bro. You probably don't love her. Nah, all good. Why would I shit on young love? Young love's beautiful. I'm sure they'll get married. Um, I got a girlfriend a couple of months ago. That's a long time for a high school relationship. And I don't know what to do. Uh, I don't know. Hold her hands. Maybe go see see a movie and have a have a have a glass of Coca Cola afterwards, and then go home to your mum's at five pm. Uh, I'd been friends with her prior to the relationship, but more of friends that you say hello to and talk to a bit before going to the next class. Okay. The kids are awesome. Uh, besides, uh, besides some <laughs> acquaintances is the term. Uh, Besides some small things, we've never really had anything in common. Yeah, okay, well, he hates it. Uh, I feel like we both started dating because we've never dated anyone before. Yes. The problem stands where I don't know if I love her. You don't have to love her. You're 14. You've been dating for a few months. That's totally normal, dude. What, what, you're going to fucking buy a house together next week after third third period? Uh, The problem, uh, I don't know if I love her. I like hanging out with her when we do, but it more or less feels like I'm just hanging out with a friend. Well, yeah, because if you, if you were doing anything more, you have to get child protection services involved because you guys are learning too much. Um, whenever she texts me, I don't get excited and rush to my phone. Oh, well, no. Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of... I feel like this guy was... This, this kid was like in the first two days, he got a girlfriend and was excited about it and then was like, hang on a minute. I don't like vibrate with ecstasy every time I get a text from her with an emoji in it. What's going on? Okay, um, continue. Uh Whenever she texts me, I don't get excited and rush to my phone. Dude, that's not what love is. Could you imagine how fucked the world would be if every time someone's boyfriend or girlfriend texts them, they would get excited and rush to the phone? Do you know how many, how many fucking pilots would crash planes? It'll be 9-11 every other week. Um, I kind of get annoyed because I know the conversation is going to be exactly the same. Hey, babe. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I love you. I love you too. That's- you know what this kid's realizing? He's going, oh my God, 
I'm 14. <laughs> oh my god, I'm in a relationship that a 14 year old would be in. Yeah, dude, this this is what this is what it is. You're like uh, uh, when you're dating some dating someone in quotation marks when you're like that young, you're basically imitating a relationship. It's like a cosplay of a relationship. You guys are like playing pretend. Not to shit on the guy, but like, you know, you're you're kind of going through the motions of, a, of what a relationship is, but you're not feeling any of it because you're fucking 14 and it's not really real. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm sure you guys will have kids and a mortgage together. Um, when I say I love you, I never feel anything. Not like when I hug my parents. I feel a warm, happy feeling. I feel the words are empty and cold. Um, as I, I feel the words are empty and cold. Who's this written from? Patrick Bateman. As I stated prior, I've never actually dated someone other than a small elementary primary school relationship. Man, this kid, this kid's like a, a ladies or a, or a small girl's boy. Um, is it different or is it this? So I only know that ty the type of feeling of love that would be from parents and not from a relationship. Is it different or the same? Well, I should hope not. Otherwise, I, I would have to fuck my father. Uh, I don't want to break up with her because I'm nervous that she'll hate me and her friends will too, as I'm friends with them also. It's not like I really want to anyways, but I don't know if I'm dragging anything on. I feel like I should give more time for me to find out if I actually love her or if I'm only dating her because I want to be in a relationship and not uh, say I'm single. Um, this kid is emotionally intelligent as fuck. Mm -hmm. I, feel like you, I feel like you don't need a... I feel like you've already written out the answer in your email, dude. It feels like you're in a relationship because you want to be in one and you don't want to be single. And you know that it's not real and you don't feel anything. You're just scared of breaking up with it. You just wrote it all in their email. You don't need my answer. What you need to do is just read your email slowly and go, oh, fuck, I don't like this girl. I shouldn't be with her. Um, I feel like uh, oh, I weigh 200 pounds. So what's that, like? 90 or 100 kilos i'm 510 and i don't look the nicest so i feel like this will be the only chance to be in a relationship wrong i also don't know if i really want a relationship with anyone at all i've been stressing over this for a while and thought you could give me some advice what should i do have a shit one um also don't come to america when you get your new chin because you'll end up making all the women fall in love with you <laughs> Uh, I wish I could catch a show of yours. Keep up the YouTube. I get excited about every upload. Thank you, mate. Um, yeah, dude, you're, you're fucking 14. Uh, this is absolutely not going to be your only chance at a relationship. Here's the thing. When you're 14 years old, do you know how fucking small your world is? Your world is so small that you're kind of considering maybe I should stay in a relationship with this woman for 90 years because her, her friends in, in school might dislike me if I break up with her. That's how small your fucking world is, that you're considering committing your entire life to this girl you don't really like because some friends from school might get annoyed if you broke up with her. That's, yeah, yeah you don't like her. Um, you don't need to be with her. You've been with her for a couple of months, you can break up. She'll be all right. She's 14. She'll get over it. So will you. This isn't going to be your only, relation, your only relationship in your entire life. Think about... What, you're probably going to live for 70 more years? You reckon you're never going to meet another girl that, you, that might like you? Wrong, okay? What, your world's going to get a lot bigger the minute you fucking become 16, let alone leave high school. You'll be fine, dude. Uh, I think you should break up with this girl because uh, what you're doing is a disservice to you and her. Uh, and this kind of goes for everyone who's in a relationship where they don't like the other person or, or don't feel the same about the other person. What you're doing is wasting your time, but more importantly, you're being very kind of mean to her because you're not giving her or him what they need or what they think they're getting from you. You're kind of like lying and playing make-believe to this person who might feel that way about you, but you don't feel that way about them, so you're wasting their time and their love. Uh, so you should probably, you know, just break up with them. It's not a big deal. You're 14. You'll be fine. She'll get over it. What mm. do you think, Rosie? Yeah, I did you agree. Did you have a relationship when you were 14? Uh, I, 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 I feel like did. I may have had, I reckon I had like a couple like of year, one or two week relationships. Yeah, year seven I had like a couple days. I yeah. didn't like him at all. I was just like, I don't even know why I said yes. And then you just he's like. A, you just were like, oh, yeah, you, yeah a boyfriend. That, I yeah. should have one. And also, like, high school is just such, like, a dramatic, like, yeah. thing, like, where you're like, oh, my God, like, I have no friends or, like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. High school is such, like, a small time in your life. Yeah. That really doesn't matter. Like, I mean, like, yeah. try hard and everything, like, by all means, but, like, 
the social stuff and everything, it really does not matter, like, at all. Like, her Absolutely. friends might, like, not like you and whatever, but they'll get over it. And Are you then, friends with anyone from high school still? Uh, yeah, a few of my friends. Uh, like, yeah. actually, it's funny, though. Like, people that I was in groups with, not really, but people from, like, my school that I became friends with, like, later on. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I was never in their group. So. Yeah, so that's that's what yeah. I mean. Like you're kind of freaking out about oh, like that's so. Think about how fucking insane it would be for like you to still be friends with like a group of people because you're friends with one of them from your high school. Like that wouldn't happen. Like high mm. school, you kind of leave with like one to three or four people. Yeah, oh, that well, are actually friends. Yeah, Cam's actually got the same group that he had since like primary school i think oh well then you, but you like that's like very that's like very very rare no very, i think very he rare. should stay with this girl for the rest of his life <laughs> After, upon hearing that i reckon that no matter no matter what don't you dare break up with her for the rest of your life you're going to marry her and have children with her and and you'll never feel love real love because if you, yeah otherwise you might annoy some <laughs> of their friends if you feel this way now, definitely, I reckon, get on yeah, to dude, ending it. picture this, all right? Because yes, it'll cool. just get worse. It might be stressful. It might – it probably will piss her off. You know, no one likes to get broken up with. It's not fun, right? But uh, imagine how much – if you don't, like, feel anything now, imagine if you stayed with her for 30 years, how much you would fucking hate her. Right, if you feel like this now and you just force yourself to stay with this person, imagine how much you would hate her and how horrible that would feel for her. Right? It's not a big deal. Your your these high school relationships, they come and go. I'm sure you know dozens of friends that have had one month to fucking three week relationships that have just ended for kind of no real reason. They just did and then they started a new one. Have a look at people around you. You're you're in a bubble right now, it's not gonna affect you too much. Um Yeah, that's my advice. Um, how how are you feeling on our decision to not go back to Phimosis material? Uh, I feel pretty... love advice or uh, my dick hurting? <laughs> I don't mind giving high school relationship advice. Yeah, I feel That's like... That's fine. I feel like after that, I'm now excited for my dick hurts material. <laughs> so next episode is going to be great, guys. Thank you very much for, for listening. Uh, the Patreon episode is up right now. You can go and listen to it right now. Go get it. Uh, if you support the show, you get access to the Discord. You get access to a bunch of uh, uh, exciting things uh, as well and early access to all the content that, that I release as well as, you know, cheaper tickets and a bunch of other benefits. Uh, the Patreon is growing and we're really appreciative of that. Thank you very much uh, for listening and I hope you have a shit one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>